Now we have all this sorted out. Let us go to the back end, uh, which is the controller, and start working out this thing. So, first of all, we have to define the variables that we're making reference to. We made reference to one variable here and one here. All right. So we have to define the two of them. So if we go to our login.ts, just above the constructor, we're uh, supposed to define our variables. So we'll say, I'll uh, define it with public, and we call it um, email. And the type is string, it's supposed to be string, and that's it. We do the same thing for the password. The type is string, and that's it. So now with that now that we have this, we can now look at what should be in the submit login. But before then, let us create all the all the the functions that we made reference to here. So we said on click submit login we've created submit login so if we go back we'll see that there's forgot password and there's redirect to sign up so i've um, copied it we'll go there remember that there is a constructor here as you can see there's a class called login page every other thing here is inside this class from like this the whole of this is inside the class then there's a constructor the constructor contain any code you write here will run once this login page is loaded. So once somebody visits the login page, any code you write here will run. The rest of this will just have to stay until you call them up. All right. So let us create the next function, and we call it um, forgot password. Then we we'll do the last one. The last one we call it redirect to sign up. Copy. So we redirect to sign up okay so and that is reasonably the last one so from here we have um, three of them and um, the next thing we're gonna look at is to actually start writing codes that will be referenced here so let me give you an example of this email so let us say that we assign a value to this email if we say email equal to whatever at my email remember i told you about double uh two two-way data binding right here we did a two-way data binding we're saying that uh if the form if the value is set in the controller it should reflect here if the value is set is changed here it, it should also reflect in the controller so let's go and see what the value of the email will be right now so the page is refreshing as you can see once it refreshes what do you think is in my email box whatever at my email so the we change the value from the from the controller and it's also reflecting in the form as you can see and that is super cool about ionic and uh, this is an angular feature ionic uses angular all right so uh, let us just delete this so the first thing we do is to import Firebase like we did in the earlier tutorials. So to import Firebase, we'll just go and take our code from an earlier um, application. So right up here, we have Firebase imported. So we have it. Copy it. Go to login.ts. Because uh, to know if the user is logged in, we have to use Firebase. So we've imported Firebase. And then secondly, we have to start coding what should be here. So I'll paste it right now for you. All right, I've written this code for the login. As you can see, we now have something inside, and uh, the login function stops here. Then you have the other functions here still empty. Now, I'll walk you through what I've done, and then so that you understand, I'm trying to save your time. That's why I'm writing it straight up before explaining. Now, what we have is the we want a pop up once the person clicks the submit button, and this uh, function is triggered. We want a pop-up to show up this is how you create a pop-up in uh, in ionic and then the pop-up will just say please wait all right so this is what triggers the loader so i uh, i saved it inside a variable then i triggered it with loader.present so as you can see it is on the line because we've not actually imported it so we're going to go to the top and import loading controller so as you can see there's nav controller nav params so we have to import it loading controller now we've imported it we have to actually mention it here so we have to declare a variable called public uh, just call your variable in it and i'll call mine load ctrl then it's of the type loading controller 
So um, we'll put comma. Now we've declared this variable in our constructor, which means uh, if, we, if we come here, this is loading, sorry. Loading. So this variable we declared is what we're using here. So we're accessing it with this dot loading controller. Then it has these features, which is load create. If, we, if you go to the Ionic uh, documentation page, you will read more about this. So if we go to the documentation, and um, instead of um, components, if you look at the API, then you can see loading controller, and then you can read it up, read up more about loading controllers. So we're at the API, and uh, if we scroll down to L, we'll see loading controller. So you see all that things you can do with loading controller. And then there's an example here you can see. So what we have here is just an example usage of loading controller. And when you click any of them, you will see uh, what, what they do as you can see. All right, so I just used it here. That's how you use it. You import it first, then you declare it, then you start using it. So we just started, once this function is called, a loading controller should come up. That means um, the user should know that uh, something is processing at the background because they have submitted their email and password from the HTML page. So what we're doing is uh, we've written a code somewhere else that, uh, that is called the user service. So what we did uh, is to write a clean code by just abstracting some things to another file. So we have a user service file, uh, like a service provider file, where the file handles all the things we need, like the user login, registration, and a whole lot of things. So we have abstracted the code. So inside the user service file, which we've not created, we'll create it. There is a method, a function, that is called login user, which we'll create inside our file. That login user accepts the user's email and password, and then processes it. After processing it, we will get the result from here. So we're making call to an external file that we will uh, get the result. So from the result, we declare the variable. And as you can see, once we get the result, we'll stop the loader. This loader is loading here. So once we get the result, we'll have to stop it. So, so we do loader.dismiss, and then we redirect to another page, okay? So um, we can call this page anything. For now, I'll just let's just call it home page. So if, if this is successful, if the result was successful, then we dismiss the loader, and then we redirect to uh, the home page. But if, it, if there's an error, we still dismiss the loader, we stop the loader from loading, then we display the error using another type of display that we call toast. Toast is this thing that pulls up at the top of your screen. Uh, if we go to the top of the screen, toast will pull up here. We'll see all these things in action once we test this, all right? So, but we've not imported toast, so toast controller, just the way we did for nav con the loading controller, we'll import toast. And, um, from there, we have to mention it here too. So we'll do public, public, toast, call it any variable. For me, I'll just call it toast control, then um, this. As you can see, the underline is gone. So we have only two underlines waiting for us, which means uh, the user service, we've not imported it, and the home controller, home page, we've not imported the home page. To import the home page, we'll just go to another page that we've worked on before and just import uh, the home page from there so this is where we've imported the home page before so we can come to our login page at the top and um, import the home page it's not in pages it is uh, on its own page all right now we've done it as you can see the home page is no longer on the line so in the next video we will create the user service page as usual i'll type out the code then i'll walk you through it once we are done with this we'll have to test it immediately so the, the whole of these things will make sense to you all right See you in the next video.